In 1999, a young man named Todd collapsed from a ruptured blood vessel in his brain. Although Todd and his family were members of the church, their activity had been sporadic, and none had experienced the blessings of the temple. On the last night of Todd's life, his mother, Betty, sat at his bedside stroking his hand and said, Todd, if you really do have to go, I promise I'll see to it that your temple work gets done. The next morning, Todd was declared brain dead. Surgeons transplanted Todd's heart into my patient, a remarkable individual named Rod. A few months after the transplant, Rod learned the identity of his heart donor's family and began to correspond with them. About two years later, Todd's mother, Betty, invited Rod to be present when she went to the temple for the first time. Rod and Betty first met in person in the celestial room of the St. George, Utah Temple. Sometime thereafter, Todd's father, Betty's husband, died. A couple of years later, Betty invited Rod to vicariously represent her deceased son in receiving his temple ordinances. Rod gratefully did so, and the proxy work culminated in a sealing room of the St. George, Utah Temple. Betty was sealed to her deceased husband, kneeling across the altar from her grandson, who served as proxy. Then, with tears streaming down her cheeks, she beckoned for Rod to join them at the altar. Rod knelt beside them, acting as proxy for her son, Todd, whose heart was still beating inside Rod's chest. Rod's heart donor, Todd, was then sealed to his parents for all eternity. Todd's mother had kept the promise she made to her dying son years before. But the story doesn't end there. Fifteen years after his heart transplant, Rod became engaged to be married and asked me to perform the sealing in the Provo, Utah Temple. On the wedding day, I met with Rod and his marvelous bride, Kim, in a room adjacent to the sealing room where their families and closest friends were waiting. After briefly visiting with Rod and Kim, I asked if they had any questions. Rod said, yes, my donor family's here and they would love to meet you. I was caught off guard and asked, you mean they're here right now? Rod replied, yes. I stepped around the corner and called the family out of the ceiling room. Betty, her daughter and son-in-law joined us. Rod greeted Betty with a hug, thanked her for coming, and then introduced me to her. Rod said, Betty, this is Elder Renlund. He was the doctor who took care of your son's heart for so many years. She crossed the room and embraced me. And for the next several minutes, there were hugs and tears of joy all around. After we regained our composure, we moved into the ceiling room where Rod and Kim were sealed for time and all eternity. Rod, Kim, Betty, and I can testify that heaven was very close, that there were others with us that day who had previously passed through the veil of mortality. God, in His infinite capacity, seals and heals individuals and families despite tragedy, loss, and hardship. We sometimes compare the feelings we experience in temples as having caught a glimpse of heaven. That day in the Provo, Utah Temple, this statement by C.S. Lewis resonated with me. Mortals say of some temporal suffering, no future bliss can make up for it, not knowing that heaven, once attained, will work backwards and turn even that agony into a glory. The blessed will say, we've never lived anywhere except heaven. God will strengthen, help, and uphold us, and He will sanctify to us our deepest distress. When we gather our family histories and go to the temple on behalf of our ancestors, God fulfills many of these promised blessings simultaneously on both sides of the veil. Similarly, 
we're blessed when we help others in our wards and stakes do the same. Members who don't live close to a temple also receive these blessings by participating in family history work, collecting the names of their ancestors for temple ordinances to be performed. President Russell M. Nelson, however, cautioned, We can be inspired all day long about temple and family history experiences others have had, but we must do something to actually experience the joy ourselves. He continued, I invite you to prayerfully consider what kind of sacrifice, preferably a sacrifice of time you can make to do more temple and family history work 